guys, welcome back. This is Ginny from Polly's Paper Studio, and it does seem like I have been gone longer than a week since my last post, uh, but really it has only been that long. We've been busy with the holiday, um, and we went camping and all the things, but now I am back to work creating lots of fun Christmas-inspired projects to share, and we're going to start this one with a Use It or Lose It tool, which is a crimper that has been in my stash for a really long time. I used it to create a star ornament with some wire and lots of country inspired embellishments like simple flowers and vintage buttons. So let's make this together. So this project begins with my use it or lose it tool. Now I have had this in my stash for so long and it's almost made its way out a few times, but for some reason I just keep sticking it back in the drawer and I thought today I would use it to create a faux cardboard sort of texture on my craft paper and clipped out a star using my Sizzix die from craft paper. I also clipped a white card stock that's 110 pounds and then I've also cut some foam with the same die for the second and third layer down. I did go back in with my scissors and clip just a bit off the edge so that it would be tiny bit smaller and that way it would be easier to adhere. So what I want to do is take my craft star and really carefully position it because I want it to be uh, like level and even across. Like you clipped this from a cardboard box. So it's very primitive and very homespun. So now the turning of this dial will pull the star through the crimping tool. Um, this is probably 10 years old or more um, and now I guess I'm not getting rid of it. So I guess it gets to stay. Um, now I've got the star and what I want to do before I add the mixed media items is go ahead and adhere those secondary layers. So this would be the cardstock and then put your foam behind it. That way once you're putting your wet uh, mixed media items on it won't warp the texture of the cutout. Okay so what I'm gonna do is grab my brush and this is the Aileen's Glitter Snow. I use this pretty much all the time for my winter projects. I also use this in place of um, texture paste when I'm using stencils because it works brilliantly. It is very fast drying and it is very inexpensive and for some reason I don't have luck with texture paste. It just always seems to dry out. As soon as I open it I get a good use or two and then it's not usable. But this really stays um, workable it, this has been open for a year now, so that is a good long life for a mixed media product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully add it. Now, of course, you would have your other layer, so it would be a little bit more sturdy. Um, grab a little on my paintbrush. See, that's not very much. And then I'm just going to work it up kind of going over the edge. Maybe if you want more, put more on. If you like less, put less. But once it's kind of on messily, I'm just going to lightly drag it over. You see, I'm just barely touching the edge. So what I'm getting is a coating on the raised parts of the texture. So go around and do the whole thing very carefully. You don't want a heavy hand with this because you're just going to wind up painting more or less that um, whole surface because if you get it in between of the dents then it's just going to be a covering rather than um, a light kind of... See how that looks very frosted? It looks... Um, not intentionally put, it's sort of organic. Um, go around and do the whole thing and then even if you like a little bit more you can top the edges off once it's a dry on the um, 
very edges there. You have to let this dry for maybe 10 minutes so that you can handle it and work with it more. Um, make sure that you close the lid very securely and also put your paintbrush in water because it will dry up and ruin your brush. So um, this is the base um, for the ornament that we're creating. And so this is very rustic and country inspired. Now, what will go better with that than plaid? So I've picked my pattern paper here and I've got this card base. It's a five by six and a half inch. And I did add the plaid to the inside already and a place to add a sentiment. So now I can work on the top for, um, all the layers, I'm using that green card stock because it does coordinate with plaid and it just looks a little bit more, um, you know, festive and country inspired. I've added a layer of that craft to the top, leaving an eighth of an inch around. So that way I will keep all the layers consistent. And then I'm going to add that to the card base. And the next layer is going to be that plaid. So what I've done is, before I added it to the green cardstock, I went in with more of that snow. I just did the corners because you don't want to overdo it. Um, once that dried, I added it to the cardstock again, that same green, and then I popped it up with the dimensional foam, craft foam, and that will begin to build some dimension. And I'm just going to add it with more um, adhesive. This is a tacky glue, and I think that it works pretty well on that foam because it isn't porous, so you wanna make sure that you use a good strong wet adhesive. So right in the middle will be perfect, and that is leaving, you see, a generous border of that craft because I think that is just very country inspired and it adds a nice warmth. So I'm just taking a moment to uh, make sure that it's even and right in the middle and then give it just a minute or two so that you know those adhesives have set up. I think we have jumped very quickly into winter here in mid-Michigan. Just this last weekend we were camping and it was beautiful fall crunchy leaves. We went on lots of nature hikes and sat by the lake and had our coffee and it was really chilly but it wasn't cold. Um, and this morning I have already been shoveling which makes me very unhappy because I do not like the snow but we did at least get one last trip with the camper and it was relaxing and fun and we had football and our kids came out and enjoyed a dinner with us so of course we did have a nice time and the camper is all shut up now until next year um, so we're gonna have more adventures but we gotta get through the cold first um, this is a stem it will be a handle I create these with the stems from flowers when I purchase them on a bunch or berries uh, on stems. This is the part that you would normally uh, cut off and not use or stick it in a vase so that your flower display had some height. But I really like the thickness of the wire and it is coated with um, usually has green or brown some uh, floral tape so it's finished already it's not too hard to bend it wasn't easy um, but you do want to work it slowly around something so that you can achieve a nice arc um, I used a Diet Coke can you could use whatever fits you just have to measure how far apart you want it to be so here is the finished star I'm working with and that was that craft and we finished it with the uh, faux snow and popped it up on foam so now I know how far apart I need those wires to be for it to look like an ornament so I've got that right here and I measured it around and it worked out so that I could use my Diet Coke can. So I worked it around and I didn't get any uh, like angles or kinks in it. It just is a nice round edge. And then before I 
add it to the card. I did tie on a very simple uh, burlap twine bow, and this is just more country style. It's a small detail, but it's really cute and festive. So what I want to do is add this with hot glue and then tap it with the ornament so that I'm sandwiching those ends in between. That way I know that it will be secure. This is also going to help disguise any um, glue globs that decide to stick out um, from underneath because they'll be tucked up underneath that uh, star shape. Okay, now I've got the ornament sort of in place. What I want to do is um, continue with a less is more and sort of simple theme. And what I want is to add a very small sentiment. This is part of the backside of this plaid. I think it was from Simple Stories. I clipped out the sentiment, then I added more of that snow, see, and then I put it on 110 pound cardstock because I want it to be keeping its shape. If it's not fully supported somewhere, I don't want it to fold over or not be supportive. So then I did add also a layer of double-sided foam adhesive tape for the whole thing and then I went back with the second piece because you see where it's going to hang off you've got to support that edge so that it will lay flat so I'm just going to pull that tape and put this on now we've got lots of layers with the snow and the texture and this sweet little sentiment which I think is just adorable if I liked snow I might like a sleigh ride but once again I really do not enjoy winter very much and that's too bad because we live in Michigan and you get a whole lot of winter even if you don't like it. Okay now how to embellish this is not to go crazy with the ribbon and all the fluff that I usually do. I do have a couple of evergreen branches cut from that same cardstock. So I'm just bringing that color in and making sure that everything balances out. And this is going to go right here on the edge and they will overlap just a bit and that is fine. So I'm going to add those with a bit of hot glue. I did overlap those to make them fit the space. Um, and now what I want to do is add this super sweet and simple, just one flower. Don't go all crazy with all the flowers everywhere. I put a couple holly leaves here, a little twine, some just little loopy bows, a couple snowflakes, these are just die cut as well, and then a couple little uh, candy cane charms that are hung from that. And I'm going to secure that right here. And I'm noticing that I do need to add just a bit of glue to tack that down because it's getting a little bit wild there. And I'm going to add my flowers with a bit of glue here at the top and angle that so that most of it does not stick off the edge of the card because you don't want any fragile pieces. Okay, that is done. This, um, by the way, is a poinsettia that I created with that cinch and go die. I really gotten a lot of use out of it. And for the purpose of using up scraps, it is just fabulous because they're not attached. So you can work them in any configuration that fits the piece of paper you've got and you can really get a lot of use out of it. So my final detail on this card to finish it of course is going to be vintage buttons. You can't do a primitive project without actual vintage buttons. So I picked out four. They do not match. They are more or less the same size and also the same degree of antique look. Um, they're just very um, not perfect. They're kind of weird on the edges and that is exactly what I wanted. So I am going to add those right here at the bottom and that will finish off the detail here. So I'm just going to add those with a bit of hot glue. And now that we are done for our camping season, I can get back on track for my Christmas videos, which I have been so excited for. But you know, the holidays came and 
got very busy and then we wanted to have one more family adventure before we had to put the camper away. Um, but now I am back to work and enjoying all of these festive projects. So I will of course be able to share more of them with you guys and if you enjoyed them I would be very grateful if you would give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment and if you're not already I would love for you to subscribe. As always I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!